So welcome to financial accounting uh, by your tutor, uh, Coach Samuel Ivanda. We're here to learn about principles that will launch us into our exam, which will definitely happen this coming May. So we've learned about the introduction in our first uh, classes, and now we want to um, get ourselves into the practical aspects of financial accounting. But before we get uh, ourselves into the practical aspects of financial accounting, I want to interest you with something that I refer to as the accounting cycle. And this will help us uh, launch ourselves into um, what we need to be able to study. Now, the first thing that you should understand as an individual who is on this journey, who is studying financial accounting is what exactly do accountants do? Um, what exactly do accountants do? Because uh, one, of the, one, one, one of the goals uh, of learning outcome for you is to understand the role of financial accountants. So either you, um, you're employed as an accountant, as an individual, or you um, maybe you've done internship, or you know anyone employed, there are key roles that are very familiar. An accountant will uh, do uh, cash management in an organization. An accountant will be seen to, to prepare financial statements. Some accountants will be seen to prepare budgets. Uh, some accountants will also be seen involved in taxes, either taxes, filing returns, taxation planning. Um, some accountants also uh, be involved in cost management, especially our cost accountants. Uh, but we know that some, for some organizations, these roles, we only have one defined person who does them. They, they do all the work of the financial accountant, they do the work of the cost accountant, they also do the work of a management accountant. So there are various roles. And even when you look at the job description of financial accountants, they should be able to give you an idea of what a financial accountant does in an organization. Mm -hmm. Now, what a financial accountant does in an organization, in one way or the other, fits into our study uh, when we are studying financial accounting. Because at the end of the day, we want to understand Whatever they do, what is the principle? What, why, do we, um, why do we do whatever we do? So it's very important, and that's what I want to, to share with you. So let's first look at the accounting cycle. We all know that the end result of financial statements is usually the end result of the accounting cycle are usually the financial statements. And I believe that, but by right now, you know what are the financial statements that we have. We know what financial statements we do have, uh, which is our cash flow statement, our statement of financial position, our statement of changes in equity, then our statement of, okay, maybe you can call it income statement or a statement of comprehensive income. Statement of comprehensive 
income and and so on maybe uh, sometimes they bring in the notes to accounts so these financial statements usually our end product but also it's very important to understand that before before our financial statements there's other activities that do happen usually the start of any financial accounting financial accounting starts with what we call a transaction so a transaction ha happens and a transaction happening is let's say there is a sale of goods it could be a purchase of goods it could be um a payment of an expense and so on. The day-to-day -day transactions that happen in a business is where accounting all starts from. And usually these transactions are recorded in what we call source documents. This is, this, this is uh, basically the documents where we record these transactions as we are making them and some of us as documents uh, invoices uh, receipts uh, purchase orders uh, documents like debit note uh, credit note and so on. So as part of our accounting cycle, once we record our transactions, the source documents, mm -hmm. the first books we open up, I usually call the books of prime entry. We call them the books of prime entry. And we call them the books of prime entry. Sometimes they also called books of original entry. Now, the information that goes into our books of prime entry is from the source documents and under here books of prime entry we have the most common ones that we know we have the cash book we have the sales journal sometimes it's also called the sales day book it's called the sales day book Sometimes it's also, uh, we also have, again, the purchases day book. Now, um, the sales journal or sales day book records sales that were sold on credit. The purchases day book records purchases that were bought on credit. The cash book records sales and purchases that were made on cash. So that is the game. So cash transactions are recorded in the cash book as the purchases and sales journal do record those that we are made on credit. Now, we also have other books uh, like the general journal. General journal. We have what we call the return inwards journal. and returns outwards journal and so on. So from our books of prime entry, we usually transfer these transactions into the ledgers. And these, these are usually your common T accounts. Mm -hmm. These are usually our common T accounts and are usually demonstrated by a debit and a credit. And from our ledgers, we go on to draw our trial balance because we balance off our ledgers and get balances that move to the trial balance. But before that, we usually have uh, reconciliations. 
And some of these reconciliations could be bank reconciliation. Or they can also include um, correction of errors. So once we do correction of our errors and uh, bank reconciliations, we also have what we call, uh, these ones will come after the trial balance. So after the trial balance, uh, we usually sometimes also have, after the first version of a trial balance, we usually have what we call end of year adjustments. And our end of year adjustments uh, usually include accruals, uh, prepayments, um, and so on. Uh, we should also have provisions for bad debts. Provision for bad debts. We also usually have uh, depreciation right there. And after our end of the adjustments, we now move to our so-called financial statements. So as you can see, uh, all these forms our journey uh, within the financial accounting journey. And even our study will also be guided by uh, a similar road. So today we want to acquaint ourselves with uh, how transactions can be able to get to where we, uh, the financial statements and what exactly happens uh, with these transactions. Now, I want us to um, enter into uh, one of the accounting principles which is called the double entry system. Now the double entry system says that for every transaction, there should be an effect on the debit and credit of the same amount. So for every transaction, say for example, John started a business with 200,000 cash. Such a transaction would have a debit and credit effect. So uh, right here, yours is to understand which are the two accounts that are involved here. So I can see cash and I can see my capital. So somebody will tell you that in this transaction, what we do is we debit our cash with 200,000 and credit our capital with 200,000. But this is not something that is easy for anyone to be able to tell. And as you proceed, you realize that there are some transactions that will not be easy for you to either decide on what is debit or credit. So in attaining or understanding the double entry system, I usually share with my students the model of called Alice. There's a model called Alice model, or it's an acronym, you can call it, which is um, trying to look at each of these elements of financial statements. So we have A representing assets. We have this representing liabilities. We have I representing income. And then we have this representing capital and then this representing expenses. So what happens is we look at the effect 
of transactions when each of these elements is increasing when each of these elements is increasing and also what happens when these elements are decreasing so here it's very important for you to note that whenever assets are increasing we debit them whenever assets are increasing we do debit them and when they are reducing we do credit them now under what circumstances do assets increase and what are assets i believe that right now we know that assets can be non-current or current assets and in layman language assets are what the business owns and resources that they are going to benefit from in the future as we we saw last time in our definition of assets where we say that assets are defined as resources that are controlled by an entity as a result of past events or transactions from which future economic benefits are expected to flow to the entity so whenever assets of the kind that meet that criteria increase then we debit now once you understand that yours is to know that whenever you read the transaction and you see that there is an asset increasing for example in this transaction of john started a business with 200 cash you use it to ask yourself is there is there an asset that is involved so if there's an asset that is involved and you see an asset increasing which asset we are seeing here is cash so our cash is increasing as a result of John starting a business, our cash is increasing. Now, in this case, John is pu pulling money from his pocket to start the business. As he's losing his, this money to the business, the business is benefiting. And usually what I say to my students, if, look at these uh, entries from the perspective of the business because the business is separate from the owner. So here we're trying to see that cash of the business is increasing because the owner is contributing to the business. And then we also see capital uh, increasing. The capital injected, capital is basically the owner's uh, contribution to the business. So capital is increasing. Sometimes capital can be uh, uh, referred to as equity, but in this case, uh, we call it capital. So when assets are increasing, we debit them. And when they are reducing, we credit them. Assets increase when we buy a new asset, like a motor vehicle, uh, we buy a building, we buy land. They can also reduce when we sell these assets. Or assets can also increase when cash comes in, or we get a bank loan. Cash is also in bank, like in that case, we also have an increment in the assets. Asset is basically increasing. So it's very important for us to know uh, those situations and when uh, to uh, debit and credit. Now, it's also very important for us to know that when li liabilities are increasing, they act in the reverse. For them, we credit them. We basically credit our liabilities when they are increasing. We credit our liabilities when they are increasing and we debit them when they are reducing. Liabilities are also current and non-current, and we say that some of them could be accounts payable or credit sub, cred, creditors, uh, especially when you buy from a supply on credit, you have liabilities, obligations to settle. And it's very good for you to um, remember our definition where we say that liabilities are defined as present obligations, of the entity arising from past events or transactions, the settlement of which is expected to result in an outflow of resources uh, embodying economic benefits. So if that is what uh, liabilities could be, every time a new liability comes on board, then we credit and we debit when they are reducing. I'll give you an example. Um, 
say oh, maybe on 16th, John took a bank loan for his business. Worthy two million shillings. On 16th, uh, this is 16th February 2023, John took a bank loan for his business worthy two million. So here we are saying that we have a bank loan that is increasing, so we have. Bank loan increasing. And then we have also the bank. Or you can say cash or bank. But uh, in this case, whenever you get money in the bank, your bank balance increases as you get the loan. The bank balance is also increasing. So as the bank loan increases, we say that whenever liabilities are increasing, we credit them. So it means that we shall credit our so-called bank loan with 2 million and we shall debit our so-called bank with two million. That is what we shall do. Now, here we've completed a double entry. And the same thing has also happened in the first because we say that for the double entry, for every transaction, there should be a corresponding debit and credit of the same uh, value. We've debited cash with 200,000, credit capital with 200,000. We've printed um, our bank loan because it's a liability that is increasing with 2 million. And since our bank balance is increasing as a business after taking the loan, we are also saying that there is an asset that is increasing. And that's why we have debited wow. our respective asset in this yes, transaction. Now, I want us to proceed and uh, look at income. So income is generated when we sell our goods or service, or we can also earn incomes through other sources. So um, income is just value earned for services or products that are exchanged. And last time we, uh, we also looked at the definition of income, if you remember where we say that it is increase in economic benefits, during there, uh, which would come in form of inflows or enhancement of assets or decrease in liabilities that result in, in increase of equity other than those relating to contributions from equity participants. So um, income could be sales, could be rental income, they could be tuition, fees mm -hmm. for uh, for institutions that are in academic uh, academic of nature and so on. So whenever income is increasing, okay? Whenever income increases, we do what we call, we credit. We credit when income is increasing and we usually debit when income is reducing. Now, I want you to know that income is different from cash. Through income, we can earn cash, but doesn't mean that for every income generation, it must be cash because we can sell on credit and we can also sell on cash. I'll give you um, an example here. For example, we have a transaction. Our transaction, uh, our transaction three, which says that on the same date, 16th, Feb, John sold 
John sold goods worthy five million. John sold goods worth five million for cash. For cash. Let's end, end there. So when John sold sells goods worth five million, John earns an income. And when he earns an income, we say that when incomes are increasing, we credit. So in one way or the other, for this transaction, we are saying that income is increasing. And our income in this case is called sales. These are, this is sales income. This is sales income. And what, what would this mean is that we will credit our sales with 5 million. We will credit ourselves with 5 million. And then we have what we are saying that in addition to this, we have an asset called cash that is increasing. Whenever you sell the other party, if you sell for cash, the other party pays and that cash increases. So, we have our cash increasing and we say that when assets are increasing, we do what? We debit them. So since our assets are increasing in this case, we shall come and debit our cash like that. In case this transaction was a bit different, let's say uh, the examiner, instead of saying that uh, uh, maybe John sold goods worthy, uh, five million for cash. They can say that uh, John sold worthy goods to uh, maybe Jen on credit. If this was on credit, in the same way we know that sales will always increase in this case, and we shall definitely go ahead to credit our sales. But we need to note very well that if it was um, on credit, then in this case, we shall not have cash increasing. Mm -hmm. But what we call our accounts receivable, our so-called accounts receivables will increase. And when accounts receivables are increasing, by the accounts receivables are also called debtors. Accounts receivable are assets. And we say that when assets are increasing, we debit them. So we shall debit our accounts receivable. In this case, still with the same amount. We shall debit our accounts receivable with the same amount, which is the 5 million. So as we can see, these are the dynamics of the double entry. In case this transaction was a bit different, and let's say in this case, the examiner said that uh, on 16th, John sold goods uh, to, to, to Jen, who paid, who paid by check. So if John, uh, John sold goods and Jen paid by check, it means that in that case, we shall still have our income or sales increasing. But then in this case, we shall not have a cash increasing or accounts receivable increasing. But what we shall have is our bank, is our bank increasing. It will be our bank increasing. And when our bank is increasing, it means that as we credit ourselves here, here instead of debit, uh, debiting accounts receivable or debiting cash, we shall debit our bank. 
with the same amount, which is 5 million. So those are the dynamics of what happens to income. Now, income is not just about selling, but we ca it can also be um, income that is received, either it's commission or rent income. For example, if a business sub rents um, part of the business premises and earns an income, that would be an income. So for example, maybe uh, say John sub rents part of their uh, business buildings for, one million ca one million cash uh, which was received from Andrew. So if um, we have a one million cash which was received from Andrew, our double entry here, we shall look at it from the perspective of, there is an income that is being received. Now this side, this, this case, it will be our rental income increasing. And then our cash will also increase. As this person pays for cash, they will increase. Now we shall refer back here. When assets are increasing, we debit them. So in the same way here, we shall come and debit our cash with the 1 million. And since rental income is increasing, in this case, we shall not credit sales, but we shall credit rental income with 1 million. So their income has increased. Like I said, it's not only rental income or sales income, it can also be um, in commission received, it can also be discounts received, and so on. So whenever a business earns income, we usually credit it. So that is what happens. So um, that gives us an insight on what happens with income. So when it is reducing, we do usually debit. Now we have what we call capital. Now, capital is say that capital is owner's contribution to the business. The owner contributes money to the business, but they can also contribute assets to the business. They can also contribute assets to the business. Now, whenever the owner contributes um, money in terms of cash or assets to the business, we usually credit capital. Uh, that means that whenever capital is increasing, we credit it and we usually debit it when it is reducing. So what this means is you saw the, our first transaction here where we said that John started a business with 200 cash. We said cash was increasing, so we debited cash. And we said that there was capital increase that had increased and we credited our capital with 200,000. This means that if at all, John at one point in time, John, John gave his personal vehicle worthy 10 million, to the business. So John gave his personal vehicle worth 10 million to the business. In case we had uh, such a transaction, in this case, John is not contributing money, but they are contributing cash instead. So what this means is we will have debit, We'll go on to debit our motor vehicle because the motor vehicle account for the business is increasing. 
social debit motor vehicle accounts. Motor vehicle account with 10 million. And we shall credit, we shall credit capital, we shall credit capital with the same amount. We shall credit capital with the same amount. Now, what this means is the assets have increased. The assets of the business have increased. Again, as John is contributing his personal vehicle, he's losing it himself from his side, but he's now contributing it to the business. And, and as accountants, we are accountants for the business. So we are looking at this from the perspective of the business. The business is having its motor vehicles increase and the capital of journey to the business is also increasing. And that's why we've gone ahead to actually increase the value of our capital for the business. So it's uh, very important that we appreciate what exactly uh, this means. So, very important here. Now, we've appreciated how capital increases and, uh, and it decreases. Now let's look at expenses. Now, whenever expenses increase, expenses are just like assets, we usually debit expenses. And we, whenever they are reducing, we do credit them. Whenever expenses are increasing, we debit them, and when they are reducing, we do credit. So a case in example, I can give you an example here and say, John paid four million for four million for salaries. For salaries of employees for the business. And this was through bank. So if John paid four million for salaries for the business through bank, what does this mean? We have to ask ourselves what are the transactions involved like what 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 are the two accounts that come into play here so if this was through bank then bank is incre uh, is increasing or reducing since it is us that are paying salaries in this case bank will reduce our money on the bank will reduce as this money is paid out now Expenses are increasing. Expenses are increasing, which means that in this case, we shall debit our salaries with four million. And then we are saying that the bank balance to reduce, which means it will decrease. And since bank is an asset, whenever it is reducing, we shall credit it. So I'll come here and credit my bank. With 4 million. with four million, as simple as that. So whenever expenses are increasing, we debit them. That's why we are debiting our salaries and then creating our bank. Now, as you can see, the double entry principle is being made for every of our transactions. Whenever we have a transaction that is uh that is for the business 
we have a double entry that is happening. We have a double entry that is happening. Now, what I've just showed you is how we represent uh, when we do the debit or credit. But I also want to say that uh, we usually use ledger accounts to represent our information. We can use ledger accounts to represent this information. So if they are telling us that um, John started uh, a business with 200 cash and we're saying we debit our cash and credit our capital, you can show this in the ledgers by drawing up your ledgers. Now your ledgers are T accounts. Our ledgers are usually T accounts. So I'll just uh, draw for you a, a sample here of our ledger so that you can appreciate. So our ledger, right there we shall have a debit and a credit. So in this case, we shall have two accounts. So I'm going to drop my cash account. So I'll have cash account. And I'm also going to have another account, which is going to be my capital account, which is going to be my capital account. Okay. So um, we said we debit cash with 200,000 and credit capital. So I'll come to this, to this, in case uh, this transaction happened on first, I'll write my debt, first February, 2023. I'll come and here in the account, in the account for cash, I'll call this capital. Again, you don't call, you don't put cash. So since it's the account for capital, what I'll do, I'll say, I'll say capital and record the amount, which is 200,000. So I have debited in the, in the cash account as per our transaction. When I come to my capital, remember we say that for capital, we do what we credit it. So I'll come with the same debt. And in this case, what I'll call this, I'll come and say that cash 200,000. As you can see in the capital account, I don't again call this capital. Rather, I show it by the alternative account. The reason why we do this is for reference purposes. If I ever come to a capital account and it has many things, I can know that. On this day, and uh, I there was cash contribution of two hundred thousand. So I, I know that when I go to another account called cash, I can be able to find this transaction. The same thing also happens here. In my cash account, I've called this capital, recorded two hundred thousand, and I can reference back. I know that my capital was two hundred thousand on that given date. So that is how that happens. So then we have on 16th, uh, this John took a bank loan for his business worth 2 million. On 16th February, John took a bank loan. We said we credit our bank loan and debit bank. So these are two accounts that I'll open up. So I'll just come here and open up uh, an account. Uh, this account will now be bank. This account will now be bank. And then I'm also going to have uh, what I'm going to call my bank loan. 
I'm going to have a bank loan account. Now, a bank account is different from a bank loan account. Bank is representing how much you have on the account, your asset. Well, the bank loan is representing your liabilities. Uh, these dates are not uh, are not right. So this was on 16th. So I'll just denote this and say on 16th, 02, 2023, I took a loan or a bank loan of worthy 2 million. was the two million, sorry. And I hope you're noting some of these things down. And as I debit my bank, because that is what we said here. We say that we debit our bank loan with the two million. I'll come and credit my bank loan. So when I also come here, I'll say 16th of zero two. 2023, I'll call this bank and I'll record by amount, which is 2 million. So same amounts, I'll come and re record it right there. So I've entered my transactions into the ledger accounts so i can do another one let's say for sales and i want you to, to look here uh, very well you said we debit our cash with a five million and we created our salaries with five million now Whenever you have an account opened up already, as you can see in our accounts, we have a cash account opened up already. For such a transaction, you don't have to open up a new account. What you just do is you just come to the same account and record the transaction. So in this case, I can come, since, since they are telling us that we sold uh, goods worth 5 million for cash and do their debiting cash. I'll come on the debit side of my cash account and write the debt. Uh, this debt is still 16th. So I'll just come here and say 16th of 02, 2023. I'll record sales. Worthy the five million. Worthy five million. So if that is what I have, since I already have my cash account, I will just do that. But remember, for me to complete double entry, I need to have what is called uh, a sales account. I need to have what I refer to as a sales account. So I'll come and drop my sales account. I'll just borrow uh, a leaf here and draw up my sales account. So the debt is the same. But remember, in this account, I'm crediting. And I'll just change this to call it a sales account. So on 16th, this I sold cash to the tune of 5 million. So you've seen me record it in cash account and also record it now in the sales account. So that's how I'll record my sales. Now, these other transactions, I just did them to show you but it's just uh, the same the same thing. In the case, I was representing this transaction on my ledgers instead of the cash account. This time I'll open up the accounts receivable account. And in the accounts receivable account, I'll also go on to debit. The same thing happens here. In case I'd sold by check, 
instead of recording this transaction that I've recorded here under cash account, mm -hmm. I would rather come and record it down here in my bank account. But the sales account will remain the same because at the end of the day, it is a sell for each of these transactions, okay? It's a sell for each of these transactions. So I just want us to uh, look at uh, this uh, transaction number four, where they are telling us that John subrents uh, part of the business building for 1 million cash, uh, which was received from Andrew. Now, in this case, we say that we debit our cash and credit our rental income. So we already have our cash account. So I can just come here and record cash account. Uh, this was transaction four. Maybe it happened on the same date. So what I'll just do, I'll just come here in the cash account and say on the same date, there was rental income. Well, was rental income of how much? Of 1 million. So I've debited it right there since that's what we said. So what I'll do is I'll come and draw up my so-called rental account. So I'll draw up my rental account. And on the same day, 16th, I record my cash of 1 million. I record my cash of 1 million. So that is what I'll do uh, when it comes to uh, this transaction of sub-renting. Now, I want you to look uh, very clearly here when it comes to this next transaction where we are saying that John gave his personal vehicle worth 10 million to the business. Now, one of the things that you'll understand, we have what we call the business entity concept uh, in financial accounting, which says that the business and the owners are totally two different entities. So your affairs as an individual are different to the affairs of the business. So what does that means is that uh, whenever you bring your car to the business, you're basically now moving uh, rights from yourself to the business. So the, biz the business now owns the vehicle. Of course, this is different if you're renting your car to the business, but this transaction is telling us you gave in your vehicle worth 10 million. So we valued our vehicle at 10 million. And we say that in this case, we debit motor vehicle and we credit our capital. So what this means is that, what this means is that if I'm debiting my motor vehicle, if I'm debiting my motor vehicle, I'll have to draw up the motor vehicle account. I'll have to draw up the motor vehicle account and I'll also need to draw up the capital account. Now it's very good that we have already the capital account. So what I'll just do, I'll just come to my capital account, this capital account, and record. Maybe it was still on 16th, 16th 02, 2023. Now, in this case, since it is a contribution by motor vehicle, I'll record motor vehicle and I'll record an amount of 10 million. So what that means is I'll draw up my motor vehicle account. Maybe I can draw it here. So I'll just copy some format here. Now, motor vehicle account, we say that in this account for the motor vehicle account, we debit. So what this means is that on this date, 
2023. We usually you can come and debit your motor vehicle and say you debit motor vehicle cash. Now, this is now a motor vehicle that is coming from the owner. So we're not buying it. So instead of recording cash, you record capital, which is the alternative account and record your 10 million. Like that. So that is what happens when you're recording your so-called um, motor vehicle account value. Now, that is motor vehicle. Let's look at uh, this, which is paid 4 million, paid 4 million for salaries of employees for the business through bank. We say that when expenses are increasing, we debit them. So we debited our salaries and bank was decreasing in this case since we are paying out our money. And in this case, bank reduces. So I don't have a salaries account. So I have to open up a new account called salaries. I have to open up a new account called salaries. So what I'll just do, I'll just come here and do that and open up my account called salaries. So I'll call it salaries account. Now we are saying that salaries are debited. So I'll come here if it's the same date, 16th 02, 2023, I'll come and record and say, we pay them through bank, so I'll call this bank and I'll record 4 million. I'll record 4 million right here in my salaries account. But remember, they also say that you credit bank. So since I already have a bank account, I'll just run to my bank account. My bank account is right here. I'll come and record my salaries. So maybe this was on 16th, 02, 2023. I'll come and say salaries worthy. How much were my salaries? They were 4 million. They were 4. 4 million for my salaries. So after recording those salaries with 4 million, I've exhausted my accounts. So I've been able to post transactions within uh, my ledger accounts accordingly. Now, remember what we talked about our accounting cycle. We say that after we have our, our ledgers, our ledgers, we do reconcile them and then draw up our trial balance. So what means is that these ledger accounts, if I've exhausted them for the period, the next thing I have to balance them off. The next thing I have to balance them off. So what happens here is um, for me to balance off this account, I will look at this side and this side and see which one is higher than each other. Now for the cash account, surprisingly, I don't have any thing on the credit side. So what it means is that this side is higher by that side by 6.2. Now, since this side does not have anything, I'll have what I call my balance carried down. My balance carried down of the same amount here, which is 6.2. 6.2. So what that means is that my total will now be the same. When I total up my this side, I'll have my 6.2. 
And this side I also have still my 6.2. But since I put a balance carried down here on the side that was less, I have to put a balance brought down on this other side of 6.2. So I have balanced off my account called cash. Now let's see how we can balance off capital. Now capital has 10,200,000 on the debit side, on the credit side and nothing here. So it means that we are going to have a balance carried down, sorry, of 10, 200,000. You get it? 10, 200,000. So what this means is we, our total will now be the same across. So 10.2, this is also side 10.2, just to bolden this. So as I have a balance carried down here, I'll have my balance brought down of 10.2, okay? Like that. That is what I'll have. So that's how I've balanced off my cash account and capital account. I want to ask uh, for my friends that are joining through this online. Uh, in case you have any question, please uh, drop that in the chat box and I should be able to um, respond it accordingly. Just drop the question, uh, your question in the chat box and then I'll be able to answer it. For those that are watching the recording, you can be able to drop the question in the WhatsApp group. So I'll proceed to balance off my other accounts. I'll uh, balance off my um, so-called uh, bank account. So bank account has a loan of 2 million here. And here we have 4 million. So it means that this side is actually more. So what this means is that I'm going to have my balance carried down of 2 million. Since this is 4 million, the difference is that. So when you add up, you get 4 million there. Okay, so we have 4 million right here. We have 4 million right here. And so we also have 4 million right there. And we will have what is called our balance brought down which will be 2 million in this case. So my balance brought down will be 2 million for my bank. Now, I wish to say, um, somebody asked the question and said, what debts do we include on the balance brought down or balance carried down? Now, this is what I'll say. Um, when it comes to the balance brought down, because we usually balance off our transactions at the end of the month. We usually balance off our transactions at the end of the month. So if you want to give uh, these debts, uh, which, is, uh, which is okay, uh, this would mean that you're going to have, um, you're going to basically have to record this at the end, the month, the, the the end day of the month. So if it's if these were transactions for February, you now uh, have your date of February. 
this this year's February is ending on 28th. So the last day of the month will be 28th, uh, 02, 2023. So that's what you give your balance uh, carried down. Now balance brought down is usually the date is usually the date for the next period. So you're going to have this first of March, 2023. That is how it applies for uh, the balances. Sometimes uh, some people will want to use the end date still here, but in practice, you're saying that as you're closing off your February with this amount, you're beginning the new month with this annual amount of, uh, of 6.2. So it's very important to, to take note of that. So you can do the same thing for this as well. Uh, make this 28th, 02, 2023. And now your balance brought down can have 01, 03, 2023. So that is what uh, we basically do have. So you proceed like that accordingly. So um, we balanced off our capital. We can balance off our bank loan uh, in the same way. We can also just give this a date. So 28th, uh, 02, 2023, we have what is called uh, balance. carried down to be at 2 million because this side didn't have anything. So even our total will definitely be 2 million for here and here. Those will be our respective totals. And then we will have our balance 1st of March. 2023 balance brought down of 2 million right there. So that's what we are going to basically have in our bank loan. Make this bold. So do we have another account here? Let's see. After the bank loan, we had other accounts. We had a salary account. So I can also balance off my salary account. I can just give it a date, 28th, 2023. This you can call it balance carried down of five million. Now the total will be the same. Our totals will be the same five million and five million right there. And then we shall have our so-called these are basically sales. Not salary, sorry, I think I call them salaries at one point in time. So we're going to have our so-called balance brought down on that date. Balance five million. So that's what I'll have. So I have balanced off that account. Now I have other accounts to go. I have uh, this so called account of rental. I also just come and do. 
balance, carry down, give it a date, uh, 28th of uh, 02, 2023, it will still be 1 million. That's the difference between the two sides. My total will be still the same amount. My total will still be the same amount as you can see. Ten million, and so I'll have the start of the new period. Uh, first, um, this is first of um, zero three. 2023, uh, we have a balance brought down of the same amount, which is 1 million. Whatever we put this side is what we also put this side of 1 million. Remember, this was rental income, not to confuse you, because there are also cases where we pay rent as a business, but this was specifically rental income. So we have motor vehicle. I can also balance off my motor vehicle here. And I'll have my balance. Let me first rate the debt, which is 28th of 02, 2023. I'll have my balance. Um, this is carried down of 10 million because it's the difference between the two sides. And then after I have that, I'll now get my total, which will still be 10 million on this side and 10 million also this side. And then I'll have on 1st of March, 2023, I have what is called my balance brought down. That is balance carried down. Of the same amount, 10 million. Of the same amount, 10 million. So these are totals, so you just pull them, uh, them up. So do I have another account? I have another account to balance off. It's salaries. So my salaries, I only have 4 million here. So it means that on 28th, 02, 2023, I can have my balance, I can have my balance carried down of 4 million. I can have my balance carried down of 4 million. The totals will still be the same. The totals will be the same. And I'll have on 1st March 2023, I'll have what I call my balance brought down of 4 million. That is what I basically have. Now, after I have my transactions uh, listed like this, I can be able to... Um, to proceed. Remember, we say that um, as part of our accounting cycle, after we have the trial after we have the ledgers balanced off, we do reconciliations and then go to the trial balance. Now, for this, we don't have any reconciliations that we are making, so we will just switch into the trial balance. So my trial balance, my trial balance is going to look like. This. I want you to observe. Now, 
As you can see for each of our accounts, as you can see for each of our accounts, we have balanced off and determined a total and gotten a balance brought down. So the 6.2 now represents what we have as cash at hand, as cash at hand. The same thing happens for as well for capital. You can see that on overall, we have 10.2 million uh, of capital invested in this business. We've been able to get the total. So the trial balance looks at totals, okay? This is how your trial balance will look like. I'll say uh, Johnny's business sees trial balance. Uh, this is for the period ending 28th 02 2023. So we usually write uh, details. Sometimes they can call this account and uh, usually have a debit and usually have a credit. Now, a trial balance does not have a debt, uh, a debt on each of the transactions. So we're going to see how that appears. So what happens is you now come and pick, we're going to be picking each of the balances. So let's start by recording cash. Now I'll come to the cash account and just uh, pick the name of the account, which is cash. And in recording the balance here, I can record it under debit or credit. But what will determine either I record it on the debit or credit will be where my balance brought down is. Now my balance brought down is on the debit side. So I'll come to my trial balance and record this balance of 6.2 where on the debit side of my trial balance. Now that is cash. I can come to my second account here, which is capital. So capital has the balance brought down on the credit side. So what happens is I'll come and record capital and I'll record the 10.2 right here on the credit side. And I'll move to again, to another account uh, as part of what I have. So another account that I have here is bank. So I'll come and record bank. And my bank has a balance brought down on the credit side of 2 million of 2 million, that is what I have. Then we have bank loan. We have a bank loan. Now bank loan, you go to the account of bank loan. I'll go to the account of bank loan the account of bank loan and I have my balance brought down of 2 million on the credit side. So I also come here, bank loan, I'll record, same amount, 2 million. My other account that I have other than the bank loan, I have the sales account. So my sales, Sales account has a balance brought down on the credit side of 5 million. So what this means, I'll record my 5 million right there. I'll check and see if I have another account. I have another account called rental income and it has a credit side. So rental income.
it is 1 million. So our it's our credit side, I'll record 1 million. Like that. So um, after rental income, I'll proceed to record motor vehicle, which has a debit balance. Motor vehicle, I record this balance of 10 million here. Now I'll move to another account. The other account I have is sales, salaries account, sorry. So salaries account. Now salaries, I have a balance brought down of 4 million. And it is, sorry, this 10 million is supposed to be side. Remember what we said uh, in this motor vehicle account? It is on the debit side. So I sorry I misplaced it. Um let's record the salaries. The salaries from here, the our balance brought down. Like I said, you use the balance brought down to guide you on where it we should record. Um where we should record our account. So here. Our salaries are on the debit side. Thank you, Robert. Salaries are on the, on the debit side, uh, 4 million. So I'll come and say salaries and record 4 million here. Okay. So I have recorded my transactions. Yours is to confirm that you've recorded uh, each of the transactions and you've recorded them rightly accordingly as per their balance brought down. If you are done, you come and record your totals. If you are done, you come and record your totals, which is total here. You record right there and right there. Okay. So you can see that our trial balance is actually balancing as the name goes. Our trial balance is balancing. Now, I wish to clarify somebody as what about accounts receivable? In case we had accounts receivable, its balance will be on the debit side. But for our example here, I say that these transactions, uh, these, these two transactions, I was just using them for demonstration. These two accounts, I was just using them for demonstration. So for we didn't draw up ledgers for these two accounts. But just in case you, you are drawn up the accounts for, for them, then uh, it will be able to, to show here accordingly. You're able to reflect it accordingly right there. So that is uh, something I wanted to clearly note. Now. This is how we move transactions from uh, ledgers to our trial balance. And in most cases, in most cases, when you're looking at the exam, the e examiner has a tendency of uh, bringing you already a drawn up trial balance. The examiner will always bring you uh, a, a trial balance that is already drawn up. And yours is to just calculate um, what you do as an individual when it comes to the trial balance. Uh, what the examiner provides is to prepare a financial statement. So from from the trial balance, we go into prepare financial statements. But there are cases where you know we talked about. Um, that after your trial balance, you can proceed to, to look at um, end of year adjustments. Now, if you have end of year adjustments like depreciation, like prepayments and so on, this is where you'll be able to do that before you can actually go on to, to do up your financial 
statements after your trial balance. So that is what exactly will happen. Sometimes this trial balance may not balance, uh, maybe due to some errors that you have done and you'll introduce uh, what we call suspense account, a suspense account. Mm -hmm. We'll be able to look at our suspense accounts as we proceed um, with time. So um, that is what happens with ledgers. Now we have we have we have we have we have different what I can can I say? Uh, we have um, different transactions that the examiner can really ask you. And uh, like I said, uh, the examiner will set your trial balance. As you can see, I'll, I'll just show you from my screen. This is one of the questions. Now here, the examiner was saying uh, ABC, a partnership. Then they're telling you that the following partnership trial balance as at end of this period. So you can see that we have these provided as balances. So yours is to understand that behind these transactions are ledgers that the examiner has not provided to you, but these are ledgers that we already drawn, okay? So you, for now, when you see a trial balance, yours is to understand the source that before we have a trial balance, we should have um, our so-called, uh, we usually have our so-called ledgers, okay? We usually have our so-called ledgers. So that is what happens with ledger accounts. Now, I want uh, us to, um, uh, before I proceed, do we have any questions? Uh, maybe apart from the questions that have come through the chat box for those that are uh, joining through this online, do you have any, any question that you can be able to ask? Uh, you can unmute yourself just in case you want to unmute and uh, ask your question and I'll be able to respond from what I've gone through. Any questions uh, in regards to what we have studied today? So I don't seem to see um, any questions that are coming through. So I want to assume that... Um, I have a... Uh, please go on, Robert. Um, I on when I pay rent in Adi. So how do I get to recognize that in order to find my trial balance? All right, thank you so much, Robert, for that right. question. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, you, can, uh, you can meet yourself now so that you get uh, an error. Now I want I just want to to demonstrate something. In case we had a transaction of um maybe this was a transaction seven and it was John paid for rent for the business premise. Twenty million for the next two years. So if John paid uh, twenty million, uh, and this maybe this is also cash, we can say this is cash for the next two years. So they have paid some rent in advance. They have paid some rent in advance. So for the next two years, in that case, here, instead of debiting rent, because in the normal sense, it would debit our rent expense. But if we are paying in advance, we usually have an account that we call prepaid rent. 
So you debit your prepaid rent with 20 million, with 20 million, and you credit your cash with 20 million. So that's how you treat your prepaid rent. Now, just in case the rent you have paid, some of it relates to the period in which you're in. For example, the 20 million, 10 million relates to this year and 10 million relates to, 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 to the other next year. You distribute your amount. You have a portion that will go to the prepaid rent. And let's say that will be the 10 million. And then you have another portion that will go to the rent account, which is the expense. And then you come and finally credit your mode of payment, which is cash with 20 million. So at the end of the day, you have, you have had a debit of 20 million distributed and then a credit of 20 million again distributed accordingly as well. Okay, basically you've written the, the amount uh, in full right there. So that is what happens. Now, that is how we treat our prepayments. We shall be able to understand more about prepayments as we proceed. So you drop this account, I drop this account and then uh, post this in the other transactions. So I hope uh, Robert, that answers your question. Uh, and I don't know if we have any other question from anyone in regards to what we've studied today. Uh, it's important that you understand these ledger accounts. And um, as we proceed, we are going to be able to, um, uh, we're going to be able to look at more of them. I have uh, some, uh, have some some handouts uh, or some question that I'm going to be able to share with you, and you're going to be able to draw to do the um, so-called ledger accounts, and then prepare the trial balance. And then I would want you to at least share your responses on the WhatsApp group. Okay, so these are just share. Okay. These are the transactions. So the question is saying that, uh, I just want to run through this uh, so that uh, you can go on to prepare the ledgers uh, for me. Okay, um, there's a question before we proceed. Samson says, if there was a scenario where we had two entries on both sides, how would you treat it? Okay, debit uh, 7 million and 3 million credit. Um, I hope I've understood your question, Dorothy, but let me just try to do a scenario here. Now, uh, you need to understand that transactions start from the ledgers. Transactions start from the ledgers and then they move to, um, to the trial balance. So I guess an example, if our transaction was John, uh, John purchased goods worthy, Five million and paid three million cash, and the rest was on credit. The rest was on credit. So he purchased goods worth the uh, five million. 
was 5 million and we paid 3 million cash and the balance was outstanding. If we had to represent this on our journals, what we are basically going to do is, we know that um, since there are purchases of goods, we'll have what we call a purchases account. Whenever we purchase goods for use in the process of, um, of, of, of production, or we buy goods uh, that are going to be resold, we call that purchases. So debit purchases with um, five million, uh, your five million, debit your purchases with five million, and now credit, if we are crediting our so-called cash, because we paid by cash, so we are crediting our cash with three million cash, and then we are crediting what we shall call our accounts payable with the balance of 2 million. Now here we have distributed this transaction. Now, if we are to, uh, to show this on our, uh, our ledger accounts, means that I'm going to draw up my so-called purchase account. I'll drop my purchases account. And uh, call this purchases account. And which means that since I debited my purchases, I'll come here and respectively again enter these transactions right here. Let's say it was uh, still the same date, 16th, 02023. I'll come and I'll distribute. I'll basically come and say, I bought my purchases partly for cash. Like I say, this is usually used for reference because you want to ensure that you can be able to follow through and remember that you paid by cash and then credit, then accounts payable. Accounts payable are also called uh, creditors. So uh, this is 2 million, sorry. So I've been able to represent this within my ledger account for purchases. In case I come to my account for accounts payable, this is what I'll do. Accounts payable, accounts payable account. So I have, I'm going to credit here since we say that uh, in our transaction, we are crediting accounts payable. So I'm going to come here and say same date, 1602, 2023, I'll say, Purchases, again, I don't call it accounts payable. Usually name it by the alternative account and record the 2 million, which was by, um, by, 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 by on credit. Now I bought some, some with cash worth 3 million. So I'll just run to my cash account. I'll come to my cash account just in case I hadn't balanced off. What will happen is I'll come here um before my balancing off just to okay just a moment so i can come here and say same date purchases Worthy. I'll record the post the portion that was paid by cash. Worthy, three million. So that is what I'm going to record. So it means that this will change my uh, my balances. Uh, this side now has six point two. 
this side has now 3 million, so this will be 3.2 as my balancing figure. And my total will now be 6 point, uh, will still be 6.2. My total will still be 6.2 and my balance brought down will be 3.2. I'm just trying to adjust. So it means that when I come to my tri balance, I'll expand it a little. I'll have other two accounts that I'm bringing on board. I'm bringing the purchases account and I'm also bringing the accounts payable account. When you look at a uh, cash account has now changed to 3.2. So I'll just change this to 3.2. And uh, my purchases was a new account that I just drew up. And uh, what did I have for my purchases? I have, you can balance off this and you have your balance brought down on the debit side, because when you add these two sides, it's 5 million. This side should also be 5 million, but it should have what we call a balance carried down of 5 million should have a balance carried down of 5 million and it will have a balance brought down of the same value worthy 5 million. So it means that when I come to my trial balance here, I have my 5 million as my balance that is brought here. So accounts payable, same story. My accounts payable only has a value of 2 million here which means I'll have my balance uh, carried down. Sorry, it can be here of 2 million. You write, the, you write the debts accordingly. And uh, the total will be the same, 2 million, 2 million. And now you have your balance, so-called balance carried down, sorry, brought down, brought down of 2 million. So 2 million. So you move to your trial balance here and you have your 2 million right there as a uh, part of your, what you have. Uh, you can just expand my formulas here. So you can see my trade balance is still balancing. So when you have um, a transaction that has uh, two debit and credit of that value then uh, you can have. Now, uh, I don't know if uh, Dorothy, if that was your question. Dorothy, could you unmute and, 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 and uh, confirm if that was your question or if you have, the question was different, you, I can be able to respond to that. Yes, Dorothy. It was my question, I've understood, thank you. Okay, you're welcome, Dorothy. So um, that is how we treat uh, transactions that have more than one. Um, account, transfer them to the ledgers and then move them to accordingly to the rest, uh, to the trial balance. So I was saying that I'm giving you this question that you're going to help me uh, uh, populate in the ledgers and then you share your responses on the WhatsApp group and please make sure that you, you attempt it because it will help you learn how to um, even deal with ledger accounts. So if they're telling us that commenced a business operation with 300 uh, cash injection into pass of personal funds, we know that here will be a capital account and there will be cash. So we are going to debit our cash with 300,000 and we shall credit our capital with 300,000. So you put that into the ledger accounts. They're telling us that paid monthly rent of 1,500. Now it is us that are paying as a business 
In this case, there's an expense called rent. So we shall debit our rent with 1,500 and credit our cash with 1,500. Because rent is increasing and cash is reducing. If we are paying office station at 200 on credit from stationary plus, in this case, there are two accounts. There is office stationary expense. Office stationary is usually an expense. So there is office stationary expense. And then we have another account, uh, which is accounts payable for stationary plus. So we shall debit our office stationary with 2000 and we shall credit accounts payable in the names of stationary plus of worthy 2000. They are telling us that they purchased office equipment on credit from supplies in cooperation. Now, in this case, we purchased an office equipment. An office equipment is an asset for our business. So it means our assets are increasing. So we shall debit office equipment with 10,000 and we shall credit our accounts payable in the names of Supplies Inc. with 10,000 because we have a liability that is increasing. We have this transaction of sent invoice to client B, but for services 3,000. Now, this case, there is an income increasing. And then we have an accounts receivable that is increasing. Why? Because we're just sending an invoice to M, but they're not paying for the services. So we are going to debit accounts receivable uh, in the names of MBAT and credit our sales. Shall credit our sales, or you can call it service income, but sales is okay. And you give that value of 3,000. 3, They're telling us that purchased uh, a software for a laptop computer, UJX 700. Now, a software is uh, can be an expense, can be an asset. But in this case, we are going to debit our software with 700 and we shall credit cash with 700 because cash is reducing as the software is coming on board. That's why we are debiting the software and crediting our cash with 700. Now, they're telling us that MBAT paid the outstanding. Remember, MBAT was our client whom we sold services to and sent an invoice of 3000 if they finally pay in this case we shall debit our cash with the 3000 that was outstanding and now we shall credit our accounts re receivable because accounts receivable will now be reducing we are no longer demanding mbat because they have paid their services so we cannot represent that by crediting mbat's account and then they are telling us that um met with prospective client and negotiated the provision of financial advice for client and family quoting 5,000. Now this transaction does not have an effect on our financial books because it is just a negotiation and they sent a quotation. I think one of you uh, might have had scenarios where you, you got quotations from um, a supplier doesn't mean that every time you get quotations you have bought the quotations may be just for you to compare so this transaction does not have any effect on the double entry system so it's very good for you to note it now um, the other transaction that we have is they're telling us that they withdrew cash for from the business 2000 for personal use now, when the owner withdraws cash from the business, we call those drawings. And how we record drawings is, since they are withdrawing cash, cash is reducing. So we shall credit our cash with 2,000 and we shall debit our drawings with 2,000. Debit drawings, credit cash with 2,000. Then we have this other transaction of paid WWW Limited for monthly rent internet use, monthly internet use, sorry, of 182. In this case, there is an expense of monthly internet. So I'll debit internet expense with 182 and I'll credit my cash with 182 since I have paid for those fees. Now, the next transaction here, they're telling us that received interest from the bank account 
UGX 15. Now, some of you are uh, maybe you've seen businesses that have accounts, what we call interest receiving accounts. Now, if interest receiving, if an interest receiving account receives interest, that interest is an income to the business. This time it is not you paying interest because it is you who has money on the account that receives interest. So we always debit bank, since this interest is received through bank, we shall debit our bank, our account balance will increase by 15 and I'll credit, I'm going to credit my so-called interest income. Why? Because we say that whenever income is increasing, whenever income is increasing, income is credited. Whenever income is increasing, we credit. So that's why I'm crediting my so-called income account with that value. So friends, I'm going to share this to drop this on the WhatsApp group. And I want you to do these questions, okay? And prepare ledger accounts, prepare ledger accounts and do a trial balance. So thanks so much for listening to me and uh, I wish you the best. I don't know if we have any question uh, for now, but um, uh, we can drop those on the WhatsApp group and then we can be able to interact more. Thanks so much for joining today's class and I wish you all the best. Bye-bye.